Welcome to the On Deck Podcast for all your baseball DFS needs with your superstar host, fantasy baseball experts, Casey Bubba and Bogman. On Deck Podcast is sponsored by Line Star App, the number one top rated data and analytics tool for daily fantasy sports. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the On Deck MLB DFS podcast brought to you by the wonderful people at Line Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star MLB. Always tweeting out great content and great stuff. And they're the reason we're here. And the reason we're here also is that Line Star app. So go to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store and check out the app. You can do everything lineup optimizers, there's the chat room, all the tools you could think of, all in the palm of your hands to build lineups for baseball and all the other great sports in the dfs landscape you can find myself on twitter at bd and my co-host as always on twitter at bogman sports scott bogman how are you doing my friend uh you know i'm good it, it was uh, a fun day to watch jesse winker again i guess he lives yes. for the weekends you know uh well, three well, homers you know, you know what happened him on sunday you know you know why he went off right why it is that fate, it was fate john gante it finally uh, yeah it <laughs> did finally happen it would yeah. what do you give up seven today Yep, seven and like three innings. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I'm getting some stuff ready for uh, my ITL podcast tomorrow, and I was doing Whip versus Sierra, and he is one of the biggest, like mm-hmm. his Sierra's like in the middle, 5-5 five, five something before tonight's game, and his ERA was 1.6. So and it was that Jesse Pinkman uh, gift that we always talk about. How does he keep getting away with it? He didn't <laughs> this time. He did get no. shellacked. So that was uh, it was good to see Winker. Uh, the Diamondbacks have just lost all the road games. They're now uh, 20 and 41. They've lost 17 or 16 straight road games. It's a franchise record. It's absurd. Uh, got swept by the Brewers over this last uh, week and weekend. So not so much fun watching them. But my fantasy teams are playing pretty well, you know, and, and all that stuff. So baseball is still enjoyable. I just don't watch the Diamondbacks. You know yeah, that, that that's the you. easiest part is don't don't make that bread blood pressure go up. Don't make don't let yourself have your day ruined. Just watch a you know Marlins Pirates game. Watch something yeah. else. Watch anything else. That's what. I watch do. the Giants. They're winning. It's cool. Best record in baseball. No biggie. Yeah, I don't really want to mess with that. I mean, at least <laughs> Miss Longoria got hurt, so I know you weren't happy about uh, that. Neither was I. I have him on some uh, yeah. long term teams too. Watching the ninth inning of that Saturday night game while Tyler Rogers is trying to get the save. And like, there's a lot of people that go, oh, Tyler Rogers shouldn't close because he doesn't strike guys out. But I'm like, in reality, he's a good closer because he gives up ground balls. So you need like four singles to score a run to like try to blow saves. Right. So if it's like a multi-run thing, he's actually pretty good. And that's what he was doing on Saturday. He had four ground balls. Only one left the infield. And yet they scored a run and they had two more guys on. There was one out because of all the errors. And then Longo just colliding with Crawford like a Little League play. It was mind-boggling. But they, they I mean, those up. things, uh, luckily, not no play will be worse than, uh, who was it, Crow chasing uh, Contreras back to yeah. home plate or whatever. So no, that was that, yeah, Craig. Yeah, Craig. That oh, was, Will Craig. With, that's right. With that's right. Baez, changing Baez back. That was so Baez, bad. That's who it was. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that was just so stupid. Like, what are you doing? You know, so anytime you hear the cue up the circus music, you know, and, yeah. and you hear that rap, 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 while your team is making a complete ass out of themselves, it's not going to be worse than Will Craig. Like, there were people that don't know anything about baseball going like, doesn't, wouldn't, why wouldn't the professional player know all he has to do is step Touch on first, first base, right? Yeah. Little yeah, things. so real Little dumb. Things. Yeah, real dumb. But uh, baseball is in full swing, as Bogman said. And um, with the latest reports of the MLB trying to crack down on spin rates, basically on the illegal stuff, it's interesting because over this past weekend, there's been a lot of good Twitter accounts kind of tweeting out uh, RPM differences over the last like few days. And all of a sudden, offense is going off the chart, too. Weather's getting better, so don't get me wrong. It's a big helper. But all of a sudden, some guys that had heavy spin rates got hit a little bit more this weekend. I mean, a couple Maybe of people got hit in the face, too, didn't they? Yeah. Um, um, uh, Voth left Voth Sunday. got hit in the face, Ooh. and somebody else took one in the face. I know it was like a, it grazed off the helmet first or whatever. But, yeah, man, uh, I mean, th- th- that's a double-edged sword. It definitely cuts both ways as far as yeah. the foreign substance stuff goes because, you know, there's some stuff that's like, well, they kind of need it to get a better grip so they're not hitting anybody. Uh, but others are like, yeah, this is going too far, you know. Yeah. 
There's a, there's a happy medium. Like I've listened to some some pitchers talk about it. There's the normal rosin sunscreen type thing, which helps them with control. Then there's this like super glue stuff that guys are using to help them with spin. Two completely different things that uh, can be probably regulated for the most part, but we'll see. Time will time will tell on that one. But you know what? Time will tell. I think the MLB schedule has a case of the Mondays, Bogman, because <laughs> um, what is this? We have three games. Three, three games. So that's why we talked a little more to start. I'm just going to break it to you guys here. We're behind the scenes. Um, we, we did a little bit of our side, like fantasy season long talks here, but uh, we have three games, three whole games. And uh, just so you know, DraftKings has a three day, all day slate and then a two game main slate. We're going to do all three games. FanDuel has a three game main slate. So if you just want to start, it starts at 510 Pacific. There's a game at 510 Pacific, 938 Pacific. And ten ten Pacific, or these are all Eastern. Sorry, Eastern times. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, spread all over the place, people. Lots and lots of fun. But uh, we'll start off with the goods here. Miami at Boston. Total of eight and a half on this one. You have Pablo Lopez. He is ninety two on DK, ninety six on Fanduel versus Nick Pavetta, who's eight K on DK, ninety three on Fanduel. Um, these guys have been pretty decent this year. Uh, you got a small slate. Are you intrigued with either of these options, Bob? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I well, first of all, I think any starting pitcher today has to be in play, right? It's just Fair there's enough. only six of them. Fair so enough, they yeah. all have to be in play. But uh, I think in this game, if I'm picking one of these guys, I'm going to go with Pavetta. He's been pretty good recently, especially with the strikeouts. Uh, and the Marlins haven't necessarily been hitting as well uh, recently. So I think that adds to a pretty decent start for Pavetta. So I am in on him. And with Jan Pavetta, the, the Marlins bats haven't hit well. They've helped me quite a bit over the weekend. Actually, Saturday was very nice because of the Marlins bats against Pittsburgh. But this isn't uh, w- um, DeLong or DeJong pitching for uh, Boston tonight. It's it's Nick Pavetta, who's been good, and the strikeouts will be there. Like right now on this slate, we've been seeing pitchers like even on Sunday, I think Burns put up 40-something points. Um, tonight, if you can get 15 to 20 points from each of your starters, you're doing good. That's just what just you had to, to get your burn stick in yep. on me, didn't you? Yeah. Was, don't hey, don't think I didn't notice that, Bubba. Was it know. 13 Ks? I couldn't remember what it was, but it was, it was a pretty pretty good ball game. But yeah, I'm with you on Pavetta. I think it's a good one. Um, this is a great slate also before we go any farther too. If you a, a, take the night off and whoever you spend time with outside of DFS, go spend time with him. <laughs> or um, B, just say I'm going to put a, a couple lamps in and just throw those complete contrarian stuff out there, and that would be the Marlins bats. That's all I'm going to say. So yeah, what do you got yeah. on this one, Bogman? Uh, for bats, I mean, uh, th- there's a couple of uh, Marlins guys. There, there's uh, a decent amount that some history against Pavetta because, of course, he used to pitch for the uh, th- Dickerson is four for seven with a homer, two for seven for Adam Duvall, two for six for Marte. And uh, I thought Ag- Aguilar and Bertie were pretty good pitches, but – I think the Boston bats a little bit more. Hunter Renfro has been swinging it hot. Devers had a great weekend as well. And Verdugo is starting to pick it up again. So those are the best for this game. Yeah, Verdugo went deep on Sunday night. So that's another one to look at. But, yeah, you want left-handed bats versus – Martinez uh, is banged up. Uh, her yeah. wrist on Saturday didn't play Sunday. So we'll see if he's out Monday. I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, you want the left-handed bats there versus Pablo Lopez. That's definitely something to uh, keep an eye on with the ones you mentioned there. But I, I like the idea of some Aguilar and Marte, uh, Marte Parte, and then some Jazz Chisholm, as always. So the things I enjoy with the Miami Marlins. <laughs> All right, the Kansas City Royals versus the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, over under 8.5. Jackson Kowar making his debut against Dylan Bundy. Uh, Kowar is 6K on DK, not priced on Fandle yet. Bundy 71 on DK, 73 on Fandle. For those that are curious on Jackson Kowar, um, his name's been popping up because he was like the minor league pitcher of May. He's pitched at least five innings in every start. He has 41 strikeouts and 31 that he pitched. Only given up three runs so far. He has a .85 ERA in AAA. The dude is as legit as it comes. A lot of prospect experts. His whip is higher than his ERA. His, his whip is got .88. 10 walks. Yeah. 11.65 K per nine to 2.84 walk per nine. Uh, yeah, he's been outstanding in terms of yeah. far this year, Bob. Basically, a lot of the other prospect guys were saying he's the guy after Gilbert. Once Gilbert was called up, it was like circle Coar. So we're getting him tonight. But surprisingly, DK usually puts these guys at like 4K. He's at 6K. Still going to play him. 
Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I think at the price, he's the best pitcher on the board tonight for me. So he's cheaper than everybody else. Uh, you know, uh, going up against uh, the Angels, I think that's a decent matchup. Not the best, but a decent one. And uh, yeah, I mean, the the bats for KC have been hitting a little bit too. So I like Coar tonight. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, on Fanduel, I might avoid just because. You want a guy that can go at least six innings, and he's only done that like once in the minors. So that's a little tricky, but I like Coar a lot, and I like these Kansas City bats who have been swinging it well except for Sunday against a severely struggling Dylan Bundy. Yeah, I mean, Bundy has just been kind of all over the place, uh, specifically recently. Four starts in a row with fewer than six innings pitched, and his last one was like five and two-thirds, and the ones before that were like, two, three, and four. It's been bad for him. So, uh, and there's a history against him, obviously with Kansas city. Solaire three for 10 with a bomb against him. 11 for 32 for Ben and against Bundy, you know, obviously played for the Orioles for a while Two is a triple on a Homer, a Homer for Sal Perez in, in three for 10 Whit Merrifield's uh, five for 18. That's a two seventy eight average against him. So there's a little bit of a history, Michael Taylor's been swinging it hot too, and he's cheap, 27 and 24. And Justin Upton, I believe he went yard today, Bob, yep. uh, 39 and 32. Really the only hot Angels bat uh, Monday. So, uh, I mean, uh, I that all that adds up to me liking Cower for tonight. Yeah, I like that. And then with Upton, if you're using Cower or any pitcher, you can always have a on a small play like this, you can have another guy in the lineup. And I think Upton's not a bad one since he moved to the leadoff spot. It was like 10 or 11 games ago. Now he's hitting um, close to 400 with a ton of power. Like He's been very, very productive at the top of that order, and it carried over on Sunday, as you mentioned. So if you do use Coer and you want some value bat, I think Upton's a decent value, especially on DK at 39 and 32 on Fando, respectively. But I like this royal side of thing. They've been um, swinging it really, really well. Slowed down a bit on Sunday, but uh, Benny's on fire. Still very, very affordable. Leave money on the table tonight if you have to. Don't worry about that. So like that one quite a bit and now we head to san diego to the nightcap of the evening cubs padres adbert alzale ryan weathers over under seven and a half on this one alzale 8800 on dk 99 on fandle weather 67 on dk 81 on fandle alzale has been outstanding lately the blog are you gonna take the chance first the padres yeah i think if i'm not you know if if i'm not going with uh, Cower Alzale is the other option. And if you just want more experience too, obviously go with Alzale. And like you said, he's been real good recently. Uh, five innings, seven strikeouts, one earned in his last start, five and two thirds against Cincinnati. Uh, no earned runs, six strikeouts, seven innings, two earned runs at St. Louis with no walks and six strikeouts. So he has been really, really good recently. Can't really trust Weathers. Plus, he's not racking up the strikeouts. So for me, it's Alzale and Bats in this one. Yep, with you there, Alzale and Bats. Weathers has been good from time to time, but just not getting longevity we want. So uh, you like Alzale, and you like this uh, Cubs team versus the lefty. Wisdom, two more home runs on Sunday. Uh, Bryant's doing his thing. You know, that happened to be on Friday because you took Bryant and made me take Baez, so you got the home <laughs> run. Yeah, no, I get it. So yeah, lots to like here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm with you with those guys. Baez, Rizzo has been picking it up recently on the San Diego side if you want to play. I think, you know, Kim is a good price, 25 and 22. Uh, Fernando Tatis, always expensive, but always in play. And Will Myers has been hitting too, 38 and 27. Yeah, so there you have it, folks. Three games. <laughs> that's the three whole thing, games. man. <laughs> yeah, that's it. In, out, done. That's simple. Um, so, yeah, three whole games. But remember, if you can get a rate and review on iTunes, we'd appreciate it. If you can figure out how to use their new app because they upgraded things and I am furious with the podcast app. So they got to fix that quickly. But if you can figure it out, uh, give a rate and review there because it would help a ton. Or if you'd like to watch this podcast, go to the Line Star YouTube channel, check all the good stuff out there, subscribe, give the thumbs up, and follow Line Star on Twitter at Line Star app at Line Star MLB because besides the awesome just info they tweet out once a day, they tweet out the home run calls of the day. And if you retweet the home run call of the day from myself, Bogman, and Ryan Humphreys, Three lucky retweeters will get chosen to pair up with each of us. And if you get a home run, you get some free swags. Bogman's uh, had a couple days in a row here. He's heating up, as they would say, in an NBA jam. So, Bogman, on this Monday, June 7th, who is your home run call of the day? Uh, for this one, go ahead and give me Rafael Devers. He's been on a nice little tear. Uh, not a ton of power bats on the slate for tonight. I'm going to take uh, one of the more obvious ones. So, give me Devers. 
That Devers one's a very, very strong call. I like that quite a bit. Uh, for myself, I am going to uh, go to one and only Chris Bryant. So it means he won't go home <laughs> yard tonight, but I'm going Bryant versus the lefty. Give me some Chris Bryant down in San Diego. Bogman has himself some Raphael Devers. Uh, Three-game slate. Enjoy yourselves. Spend some time with some loved ones. Do something. Figure <laughs> it out. But uh, we'll be back with you guys on Tuesday with a big slate, at least bigger than three games. I promise you that. Um, you can find me on Twitter at BDendrick, Bogman at Bogman Sports, and good luck. Good luck. Thank you for listening to the Line Star app on deck podcast. Download Line Star app from the App Store or go to linestarapp.com for all your DFS baseball needs. If you love the on deck podcast, support KC Bubba and Bogman by rating and subscribing. Good luck.